uh, hopefully this is going to get transmitted through and you can actually hear me. Um, this is my psychomotor domain video. Now the cool thing about this is when you hit the psychomotor domain, you almost always hit the cognitive domain too, so we're going to do a little bit of both here. Um, what we're looking at here is titration, which is a real important skill in chemistry, One of the, and it's one of the more fun lab activities that kids get to do during the year, because it's very straightforward, but it's also relatively difficult to accomplish the right way. Um, what titration is, is the method for determining the concentration of a solution by reacting a known volume of either an acid or a base with a unknown value of the other one. Um, by measuring how much titrate in your burette here is used, you can find the concentration of your unknown solution, which is generally at the bottom. Now, the reason this is pink is because it has what's called phenolphthalein in there, which in the presence of a basic solution, phenolphthalein is a pink color. Okay. Now, what we can do is when we titrate it with the acid, which is in here, which is 0.25 molar hydrochloric acid, when we get to our end point, this, this will be completely clear and will not turn back pink at all. And we can measure how much we've used and figure out the concentration of our unknown. Um, again, how we know we're finished, we hit the, what's called the equivalence point. This is going to turn clear and we're going to see exactly what we've used and I'm going to show you the formula that we're going to use to um, figure that out. Okay, so first thing, what I've, what I've prepared here, this is 0.1 molar sodium bicarbonate mixed with phenolphthalein, just a few drops of phenolphthalein. In here we have 0.25 molar hydrochloric acid. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, I, I've done this before, I know pretty much where this is going to end at, but I'm going to go slow. I want to go almost drop by drop until I get to that point. Now this is what's called a stopcock. If I turn it horizontal, I'm sorry, if I turn it vertical, it will open this up all the way. I don't want to go all the way though. I want to just go enough to um, make it come out slowly. So we're going to go slow and you can zoom in on this. Okay. So you, you can see it's dropping real slowly. I'm going to put a couple air bubbles in here, but it's all right. Now what's going to happen is this is going to start going clear a little bit at a time. All right, and eventually it's going to hit a stopping point. I'm going to stop it for a second. I'm going to shake it up. And as you can see, it didn't go back purple. So we've already hit our stopping point real fast here. All right. So we've used approximately 1.6 milliliters of our acid. Okay. So I'm going to go over to the board and we're going to figure this out. Let's stop for a second. All right. So the titration formula is M1V1 equals M2V2. Now what this represents is the concentration of the acid is M1, the volume of the acid is V1, concentration of the base is M2, and volume of the base is V2. What we're looking for here is the concentration of the base. Concentration of our acid was 0.25 molar, that's what we started with. We use 1.6 milliliters. So when you multiply this out, you get 0.4 equals X times 10, so 10X. Oh my God. I multiply by 10, and I get 0.04 molar for the concentration of my base. Okay, now, the problem with that, the base says it is 0.1 molar. So, real fast, we'll run through a percent error to see what we were off here. Uh, it could be for various reasons. I could have I opened the stopcock too fast in the beginning. That could have thrown me off. I could have not had good measurements on the amount of liquid I added to bowl. Third thing is I measured the amount of base in a beaker, which is not necessarily a good um, way to measure. So, um, we'll do our percent error formula. Absolute value of either way, it doesn't really matter. One minus point oh four. I'm oh, sorry, point one minus point oh four. Point one. 6 over 0.1 and I don't have a calculator on me. Yes, I do. Did that, I get 0.6 times 100. This is a 60% error, which in some cases is bad, in some cases it is. It depends on what type of lab you're doing, which is fine. Okay, like I said, a lot of physical errors come about with this, and 
my project coming up is going to be on the physical aspects of doing all these things and actually how to perform them and avoid errors like this. Okay, so that's the uh, end of the video.